Right, want to show you something here. That is a box column. As you can see, I can stick a girder on it. It's quite strong. I have quite a lot of load on that. That's not going anywhere. Now, let's see what they did at the power station. They did something called pre-weakening, which in the case of that particular column went doing this. I can see from the photo, the, the photos, they went through the back like that. Get rid of that. I don't know what they did on this side, but, I was, but let's, uh, from what I can tell, the same thing. What I can tell is that it does appear that the front and the back pits and bits of metal were, were left flat with no side stiffening on them. Now, so there's your column. It's been pre-weakened. You put your beam on it. What's happened is that this piece of metal here is caved in like that and the top is now like that. So that's what you're seeing. When you look at the photos, that's what you're seeing. And there is absolutely no strength in that. Absolutely no strength at all. You see there? There's the side of the column now sticking backwards. You see, it's that. What you're seeing is that. The side that was on the column like that, it's bent round and is now sitting like that. That's what you're seeing there with that piece of metal. That there at the top is a pad on the original column. On the top of the original column, there was a pad, a kind of pad that was half the width that the beam rested on. Now I remember that from uh, when I was there because I've had the privilege of seeing that structure close up. The beam that sits on that was 16 feet by 4. It was huge. One of two carries a whole weight of the boiler between them. The boiler of course hangs from the top. And just for the record, the other end of this girder is actually over, it would be over here somewhere. It's, it's obviously I've cut the bit, it's two photos together so the middle piece is not shown but here's what they've done to the other end of that that was the middle column supporting the huge beam and they pre-weakened it by cutting all the way around there all the way around there that this little column would go up to about there and the massive beam would be about where my finger is a bit higher up so this is part of the column that's had the back cut out of it I don't know if you can see it, but just visible is Unit 3's uh, massive beam in the background, because this is the side of Unit 2 that's still standing. It was Unit 2 first that collapsed, bringing Unit 1 down on top of it. And uh, let's see if I can find the other drawing. You see, there's that girder full length. There's the bit that I showed you with the crumpled, uh, the bent metal. There's the thing with all that gas cutting. And there is that enormous beam, absolutely huge beam. When I worked there, there was a set of stairs that were zigzagged past that beam. When I was stood on a step level with the bottom of the beam, I couldn't touch a seam well, which you can't see in the picture, that was halfway up it. But my hand outstretched, I couldn't even touch the middle of that beam, Not, never mind anywhere near the top. The bottom of the beam was on the ground floor of your average two-story house. The top of it will be against a bedroom ceiling or probably even in the loft. It was an enormous beam and I can see that the cross girders which are 12 feet deep are still intact. And from other pictures I can tell that that whole frame, the whole top frame survived in one piece. That's Unit 2's top frame. Unit 1's top frame has been pulled across as Unit 2 has come down. And he's also one piece, though it's not visible in the picture because it's about there somewhere. So there is what's happened to Unit, unit 2 and Unit 1. I'm just quickly seeing if I can get something up on the computer. And meanwhile, you can just carry on looking at those... 
I'm just paging through some things here on the PC. Because I know... Ah, there we go. There's... there's a, It won't show up on camera, but there's a picture of the power station taken from above. You know, there's the picture, that high resolution that all this comes from. It's just that picture there blowing up. And the connections we've been talking about, the one that folded up like cardboard was there, the one that's been gas axed is there. Just sticking up in the corner there, is see that short piece of column? That's the top of the column. That's where that beam sat. It would have gone across from there. That's the top of one of the columns. The other one is the one that's been gas axed off there. And that's the back is the one that's collapsed. And you might just be able to make it out, but that's the, the side beam of unit one. The beam I was pointing, pointing out earlier is over there. It's the side beam of unit two, the opposite side. And unit one's top frame has come across a little bit and landed just above unit two's. So the suggestion tends to be that unit two's frame gave way first, pulling unit one over on top of it. That's uh, what's particularly amazing, which I really find quite remarkable, is what happened here. Sorry, aim the camera properly. But the top of the beam should have been like that. It's just caved inside out like so. And the top piece, which was there, so this is its side on. I can only hold one bit. But this bit is now bent like that because of, because of the thing underneath it. And the top, and I could see that there's a kind of resting pad that I could, I know because I've seen it close up. I can just make out the resting pad, which means I know that what I'm looking at there is actually the top of the column bent over because I can just see the resting pad. You might see the profile that goes up a little bit and then down again. Well, that was the resting pad that that huge beam sat on. It was quite, it was quite amazing that we're actually working there to, to think that that pad was supporting probably 10,000 tons. And uh, certainly between them, all of these columns were taken, because basically it's an upside down building. The stop heat from the fires warping everything. The boilers were hung from the roof to keep everything in tension. And the roof, the ceiling frame, the massive frame was supported off these columns. And that pad, which is four foot long and about one and a half feet wide, I don't know what that is in meters, um, basically just took any unimaginable amount of weight. And it is amazing how strong columns are. If you have something that's a square, uh, a square column, it is amazingly rigid. You know, something that's square can take a silly amount of weight. I mean, it is, is very strong. There's nothing in that box. And yet, I would have a job crushing that, even though it's made of cardboard. Now, but you cut through the corners, and there's no strength at all. And that appears to be what's happened there. Let's see if these pictures are coming up better. Yeah, this is that picture again. And, uh, yeah, a friend of mine sent me a very high resolution copy of this picture and that's what I've been able to blow up this isn't it this is the picture that was uh, been through the internet and lost a lot of its resolution but there you have it there is basically what appears to be from what I can make out what happened at Didcot A